Hey guys, this is Miss Agar. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about air masses and fronts. After you finish watching the video and taking some notes in your notebook, it would be a great idea to go to your book and look on pages 76 to 82. That is chapter 3, section 1, and that is going to be the part in your book that talks to you even further about air masses and fronts. All right, so to get started, Air masses, essentially what I want you to think about these as, is global bumper cars. All right, you've all seen bumper cars before. You know how they work, drive around, bump into each other. Air masses do the same thing, just they're all over the whole globe and obviously they're not cars, they're masses of air. We're gonna talk about that a little bit more. Uh, next thing I want you to look at is air masses, you need to come up with some of just the general characteristics for what what is considered to be an air mass. So starting out looking here, you see a picture with all different types of air masses. We'll talk about what those different types are on the next slide. But for a, a portion of air to be considered an air mass, it needs to have uh, a big group of air has to have a similar temperature pressure, and humidity. So all of those things are how we classify air masses. And on the next slide, when we're talking about different types, you'll see that temperature and humidity uh, make up a big part of how we name these masses. All right, looking here on the next slide, here are a lot of different types of air masses, and you see all of them categorized uh, either uh, as cooler air masses, those are the blue ones up at the top, or warmer air masses that are red down at the bottom. The cooler ones at the top, we see all of these different symbols, these abbreviations, MP over here on the left, uh, CA and CP in the middle, MP over on the right, and down on the bottom, MT, CT, and MT again. I want to teach you a little bit about what each of those different types of air masses mean and why we use those abbreviations. All right, now that you have seen a few of the, the different types of air masses overall, um, very generally on that map, I want to show you how we come about those different abbreviations, those different types of air masses. So our first way to categorize air masses is by looking at the humidity of the air mass. So we can have either continental air masses, which are going to originate over land. Those are going to be drier air masses. Or we can have maritime air masses, and those are going to originate over water and contain a lot more moisture than um, the continental drier air masses will. When we say maritime air masses originate over water, usually it's going to be something uh, quite large like an ocean, but even the Great Lakes can um, lead to some maritime air masses. Uh, looking at the bottom of the slide, our second way to classify the types of air masses is based on temperature. So we can have either a warm air mass that has come out of a tropical region, or a cooler air mass that is coming from a polar or an Arctic region. So we use the words continental or maritime and the words tropical or polar and arctic to come up with a way to describe the different types of air masses that um, are affecting our weather and our atmosphere. If we look at the next slide here, I'm going to show you all the possible types of air masses that we can talk about using these categories. So on the left, we have continental and maritime. Those are the two words we talked about regarding humidity based on where that air mass originates. And then on the right side, we have tropical and polar or arctic, talking about the temperature. If it's going to be a warm air mass or a cooler air mass. So if we just pull some of these words together, we could have a continental tropical air mass. And in that picture toward the front where we had all of the abbreviations, this one would be just CT for continental tropical, meaning it originated over a continent, over a dry area, 
but it's also going to be warm air because it would have formed over a warm continental region. We could have continental polar or continental arctic, again meaning it's going to contain dry air because it came up, it originated over a continent, but it's going to be originating from a much colder region. Um, for us, we could think up by Canada or even the North Pole, bringing that really cold, dry air down here in the winter. We also have the choices um, of maritime Arctic. So that would be an air mass originating over an Arctic area, again, a cold area, but over a cold water area, right? So a cold ocean, cold lake, something like that. We could have a maritime polar air mass, very similar to Arctic, and a maritime tropical. So again, this one would be maritime because it's originating over water, and it's a warm water area, so it would be maritime tropical. So hopefully on this slide you can kind of see how we just pull either continental or maritime, tropical or polar and Arctic, and put those together to create these different types of air masses. Now the next big thing to talk about is we just at the beginning of this video talked about how air masses are very similar to global bumper cars and when you are in bumper cars the thing that is likely to happen is that you have a collision and that happens with air masses on our earth. So we have different types of air masses and they collide in different ways and those are called fronts. Um, you've heard these talked about on the weather before, and you know that when two fronts, no, two air masses collide, or two bumper cars collide, uh, we're not talking about fronts like these, right? Instead, we're talking about fronts like these, and you have seen these when you have watched the weather before. Um, we have four different types of fronts. I'm going to talk you through all four types. These are the symbols that we use to show the different types of fronts. So down here in the bottom left, we have the symbol for a cold front. Um, to our right, that is the symbol for a warm front. Right. Upper right, that is the symbol for a stationary front. And then upper left is the symbol for an occluded front. So here we go. Let me make sure you can see this here. Oops. All right. First front that we're going to talk about is a cold front. So in this diagram, um, which I would recommend drawing in your notebook, you can see that cold air mass is coming in and it, because it is a colder, denser air mass, um, as it's running into a warmer air mass, that warm, less dense air that we've talked about in the previous unit is going to end up rising up above where that cold air is coming and pushing in to take the warm air's place. Um, when we're talking about a cold front, you can think of the when you're trying to remember how which one is a cold front and a warm front cold front the cold air mass here is kind of like the bully the bully bumper car so if the cold air mass is running into where the warm air mass um, was forcing it to go up um, as that warm air mass becomes um, is less dense and it ends up rising as the cold air pushes underneath to take its place um, you should remember from the previous unit that that warm air mass is going to contain some moisture and as it uh, rises up into the atmosphere and the air cools and uh, the water vapor reaches its dew point, it's going to condense and that's why you see all of those clouds right there where the cold and warm air masses are um, meeting. Uh, when you have a cold air mass, you are very, very often going to get an abrupt change in the weather, like uh, quite often a violent thunderstorm, um, definitely um, some sort of clouds and, and precipitation. 
in a warm front, this is um, basically the opposite of a cold front, right? So this time we're going to say that the warm air mass is the bully. Sorry about that. The warm air mass is your bully in this situation. So the warm air mass is coming in, is the one that's pushing the other air mass, the other bumper car out of the way. So this time, instead of the cold taking over the warm, we see the warm coming and just rising up above the cold, colder air mass. Um, in this case, it's going to be a similar result as the cold front, even though we have kind of the opposite situation going on. Um, the warm air is what is coming in, um, being that bully, right? pushing in against the cold air instead of the cold pushing against the warm. But because the warm air is less dense, it's still going to end up rising above the cold air mass. And that warm air, again, is going to contain water vapor that can condense and cause those clouds. Warm fronts move a lot slower than cold fronts. Um, so quite often, instead of like a violent thunderstorm like you would see in a cold front, with a warm front, you're going to see uh, like a longer period of cloudy or foggy, rainy weather. All right, third type of front is a stationary front. Um, we're not going to talk about stationary or occluded fronts as much as the warm and cold, but they are still good to know about. Uh, here, stationary front, you can see in this image, uh, here it's almost as if both of the fronts have decided or sorry, both of the air masses have decided to be a bully. So the cold air and the warm air end up colliding and they just kind of become stationary. Uh, neither one of them is really strong enough to overtake the other and we get this stationary front in between the two, um, kind of like a standoff where the two, two air masses are just meeting and stalled there, they're stationary. Um, if the stationary front lasts for uh, a decent amount of time, it can bring some clouds and precipitation if that warm air ends up condensing. Um, that's about all you need to know for those. And now on to the last one. We have our fourth type of front is an occluded front. This is the one that we will talk about the least. Uh, essentially what's happening here is we have a warm air mass kind of stuck, caught between two colder air masses. Because that cooler air is more dense, it's pushing that warm air mass up into the sky. So again, if we have warm air rising um, and cooling down as it rises up into our atmosphere and it reaches its dew point, we're going to end up with condensation. And so again here, you see that big uh, cloud um, where the warm air mass is rising. Um, and this, again, could cause some cloudy or rainy or snowy weather. All right, so just to wrap up, uh, two biggest things here. The first one is you need to know what air masses are and how we classify those. So air masses are large areas of air that have similar temperature and pressure and humidity. Uh, remember that we can talk about either continental or, or maritime, and we can also classify them as tropical, polar, or arctic. Second big point here is that fronts are going to occur where those air masses collide, right? The bumper cars are colliding with each other, causing these fronts. And we just went over cold fronts, warm fronts, stationary fronts, and occluded fronts. So at this time, you should have some good notes on the video in your notebook. Um, make sure you use your book as another resource. If you have any questions from the video or the book, make sure that you jot those down and come and see me as soon as you can. Uh, and I'll see you guys soon.